Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually work on the clip. Um, as you can see in my viewport, what I did was actually just move the references a little bit further back um, because if I'm going to work on that clip, I don't want them to be too close. It makes life a little bit more difficult to actually be able to see anything. So I just shifted them back and kind of left that. Um, left them away so I have a bit more space to work with. So what we're going to do with the clip first, I'm going to create the big uh, area on the clip uh, initially. Um, so I'm going to start with a box for that and I'm going to go on to uh, my references because that's obviously very important to look at references when you do these kind of things um, so we can kind of get the overall shape as well so we can see what how that looks. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create the initial box just in this view. I'm going to create this very thin kind of area first, the sort of side um, area. So I'm actually going to go right to the very top for this and I'm going to create it to around about there. I'm going to push forward and then I'm going to be moving that across. So it's kind of roughly in the middle where it needs to be. Um, I'm going to go to Editable Poly and I'm going to go to Vertex. So I'm going to zoom in, just kind of line this up, press Alt and X to make it transparent. I'm going to line that up. Uh, once again, just as best as I can, not the best reference because it's quite blurry on the bottom here. I'm just going to go right here, here, and here. We're going to click and drag across like that, and then we're going to click on to connect. We're going to add maybe three edges uh, going all the way down, so three segments, and then press the tick. I can then uh, go to Vertex, I could click and drag over each or all of them. Let's start with the top one actually and let's just expand that a little bit. Next one, let's expand that a little bit less, so it's a little bit more in. And this one, I'm just going to also expand. Okay, so we've kind of got that kind of effect, so let's stick right at the top dinner and dinner towards the bottom okay so once you've kind of got that done um, we're gonna go ahead now and chamfer we just want to select the corners we want to hold control and just select the corner edges like that we don't actually want all the ones going down like that then we're gonna go on to chamfer and that will nicely round those off okay now again Ideally, we would have put this into 3ds into 3ds Max, but uh, it's not really a big deal right now. I'm going to go with three um, corner chamfers, and then I'm going to press the tick. I think that works pretty nicely. I'm going to select the back polys one, two, three, four. I'm going to use bevel because actually, what happens is if you look in that image again, you can see it angles in uh, fairly um, well, quite a bit basically. So I'm going to reduce the height on that. I'm going to increase or decrease the bevel amount. One thing you need to be careful of with bevel is if you go too small, then it's gonna to start to cross over. So what I do as a, like, a little trick is I kind of scale in, sorry, I bevel the outline in just a little bit like that, and then I actually use a scale tool just to continue that. Because then what happens with the scale tool, it will never bring those in so they overlap, okay? So you wanna kind of match that up as best as you can. In this view, it's not lining up at all, but I'm not gonna, sort of mess around with that too much because what, what I run the risk on is sort of dis distorting the model if I start pulling like this area out and stuff like that, it'll start looking a bit weird. I'm just going to leave it straight the way it is. Okay, so now for the for the clip area, I'm actually going to make a modification. It's actually um, a slightly different way of making it. If I just go and click onto this vertice, this one, this one, this one, and go all the way around. I'm gonna flatten this off a little bit, just like that. Okay, so just kind of flatten that off by scaling up. If I scale the other way, it expands, but if I flatten that off just a bit, and that's what I want. I said probably too much. Oh, is it too much? It probably is just a bit too much. Um, so let's just go with scale. Oh, I've hit T like a moron. Let's go into top view. Let's go back to right view. <coughs> I was looking for R for scale. 
just going to scale it higher again just a little bit okay now what I need to do is I'm actually just going to actually move the body of the walkie-talkie away because that's also getting in the way I can't really see it's also just um, irritating if I go to vertex press 1 I'm going to go to um, select this vert just here on this side and then I'm going to select the one on the opposite side and then hit connect okay so if I now just go to polygon um, select the poly on the bottom just here and then go to extrude but bring up the options for that by clicking the little button just there and we're going to increase that amount um, to around about here press the tick and then I'm going to rotate that corner just there like that maybe scale it in a touch as well in height in fact let's scale it in on all angles so it kind of comes in a little bit as well so if we just stay with the middle of the triangle that should kind of work quite nicely and go a little bit more than that we don't want to go too much because what will start happening is in this view it will start to come in far too much so I'm going to go like that that's okay and then I'm going to go and extrude that again and go right to the end this time so I can obviously move it so if I just go with the move tool let's move that to, uh, to roughly where it needs to go go to vertex and um, let's just scale it down like that and then maybe scale it across a little bit just to kind of thin that back area off a little bit and then let's just straighten that out slightly okay so that's that's going to be okay I think that's going to work quite nicely I might just bring it across a touch just so it looks like maybe so it touches the back of the walkie talkie um, and yeah that that's kind of done um, if you want because we obviously scaled that first one in it doesn't really look right because the inside here doesn't scale so you could just scale this in as well um, possibly what I could do is just select that area just there and just scale that out just a little bit just so it kind of flows a little bit better yeah we're always looking for a very good flow here um, <laughs> saying about a good flow looking at these edges uh, these vertices don't really flow too well so I'm just gonna drag that up maybe let's make sure we select the back one as well so make sure in this left view we click and drag and that should select the one on the uh, opposite side it's gonna look a little bit better there isn't it if we just do that this one as well just to kind of round that off nicely okay so that's kind of done very very nicely indeed uh, we're now gonna go ahead and create the area that's actually going to clip into so this bit just here so we're going to use a box for that I'm going to create a box in this view now, although this is the front view it doesn't really matter too much because I'm going to use that as a reference I'm going to drag that over place it where it needs to go that's roughly okay um, what I'm going to do, actually I've forgotten to mention, is this area just here. See where it kind of extrudes out just there? So the way that we'd create that is firstly going into um, Edge. We're going to click and drag over the vertical edges just there. We're going to go to Connect. Make sure it's set to one segment and we're going to press uh, Slide just to slide it up to roughly where it needs to go press the tick then we're going to go into scale because actually what's happening is that's kind of angled see that and if I straighten that out um, in fact let's leave it angled we don't want to cause any distortion on the side so that's not really important to be fair as long as that edge kind of is at the point where this kind of curve comes out um, what I'm also going to do go to vertex click and drag over this one just here and I'm just going to move that up slightly so again this point just here is the bottom of this area that needs to extrude to create to create these areas here we're going to select on the back okay the two edges top and bottom we're going to go to connect we're going to reset the slide and we're going to increase the segments to two and then we're going to increase the pinch okay something like that so you've kind of got quite two thickish uh, left and right sides just there press the tick now I can go to polygon select those two polys and extrude out <clears throat> okay so you can see what I've done there I've just simply extruded that out to there go to vertex click on the top drag that in click on the bottom drag that up 
that's not really round. So what we can do as a little trick, as we can go to edge, we can select the top and the bottom edges. And guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna use chamfer. So we're gonna select the top and bottom, just on the ends, go to chamfer. That's obviously way too much of a chamfer, so I'm gonna reduce that chamfer amount. And as you can see in this left view, we can also look in the perspective view if I can get it to face the right way. Uh, I'm gonna reduce that amount to maybe even just one and then I can increase that chamfer amount until we kind of get it fairly round. So that's okay, it's quite round. Again, we're working with quite low poly. You could increase the number of segments there, but I quite like the way it looks with one because it gives me a more rounded effect. <coughs> okay. Um, so that's quite nice. The only thing that I'm looking at and I'm seeing is that it's kind of a little bit distorted just there. You see what's happened. Uh, it's not really looking uh, fantastic. So what I could do is go to vertex, click and drag over these verts just here that are on the curve just there. Go on to scale. We're not gonna, and then we're gonna hit control and edge. No, it's not really gonna work how I want it to. Let's go to vertex. And it's really only the outside that we need to be concerned about. So we're just gonna be very careful. We can just hold control and select this one, this one, it's gone to move, that, 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 that. Okay, then we're just gonna scale across like I was saying, and that should straighten that all out. Again, it's not gonna, this isn't done, it's not finished, because obviously if you look from the side, it kind of comes up like that. We're gonna go and rotate, and we're just gonna rotate that across. Make sure you rotate it on that specific axis. What you're doing is you're matching it up. So if you look at it from here, you'll be able to see if it comes out one way or another. But if you can just get that edge to kind of match up with the uh, edges parallel, it's gonna look a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. You see, that's a lot better now. It's gonna repeat the same process on the opposite side as well. So you see that just there. I'm gonna go on to scale, I'm gonna scale it across, which I know is gonna look a little bit odd at first, but as soon as you look at it from this kind of angle and just rotate that so it kind of sits parallel, it's gonna be a lot nicer, it's gonna look a lot better. Okay, so now that's done, we're gonna go back onto this area just here. <laughs> I just thought of a better way. Let's go and create a cylinder in this view just here. Okay, you want to make sure that we've actually got something like... ...ten sides. Okay, it has to be ten uh, for this to work. You can use different numbers as well. That's way too thick, so I'm going to bring that in so it's very thin. Let's move it where it needs to go. And uh, again, I'm just going to scale that down. So, oh, I've just moved it by accident, moved it back. Let's go that, bring that across. Roughly where it needs to go and scale that uh, down as well. Just a touch bigger. There we go. That seems pretty good. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna scale it so it kind of covers that entire area, like that. Now you might be thinking, how is that gonna work? Why are you using a sphere? Well, I'm gonna show you. If I go to Edit Poly, all that I need to do is click and drag over one side, move it across, and look what we have. <laughs> this works a lot better. It actually needs to be quite a bit more uh, wide. Uh, if you look on this just here, it does come out quite a bit, so I'm gonna to go to around about here, and then just move this one out on the opposite side. Okay, so that's gonna work quite nicely, um, so we can see those screws on either side, just like that. Okay, next step, again, I can just move this clip out of the way for a minute, I will bring it back, is I need to connect across um, like around about here where this edge is just there. Okay, so next we're gonna go to edge and we're gonna click onto the horizontal edges. 
just running through the middle. And then we're going to go into connect. We're going to set the segments to two and we're going to increase the pinch. So we've kind of got, um, I don't know, I guess we need to kind of get it to run about there. Okay, so so it leaves enough space there for a kind of a screw to, to fit in. That's going to be okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be extruding just a little bit. So this is going to go to around about there. Whoops, press the tick. And I'm just going to be lifting the bottom vertices up. Okay, top one I don't really need to worry about too much because it looks like that's pretty much where it goes. Next, I'm going to go to edge again. I'm going to select like just the edges here and there at the front two on the end. And then I'm going to go on to connect again. It's going to come in a little bit more. So I'm going to leave that as a default for now. I mean, what I can do actually before I do that, if I just bring in this again, let's just overlap it just very slightly. So this might make it a bit difficult to select it, but I'm going to use that as a guide. Um, so that's kind of fitting quite nicely. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to edge, select this one and the one below just there. And when I go to connect, I'm going to ensure that the pinch is set just inside like that. So can you see what that's done? It's kind of set the pinch just inside. Maybe just increase it a little bit more. And then maybe I can move it across just to match up both the sides. So it's a bit of a gap there and a bit of a gap just there as well. So that's perfect. So I'm gonna move this away now. I'm then going to go onto this polygon just here. I'm going to extrude a slight amount because that's actually going to create the um, angle just here. So if I just drag that vertice down, you can see what that's done. Then I can go with this polygon once more. I extrude a little bit more to around about here. In fact, let's just go all the way in like that. Okay, so we're not really going to see that anyway. Um, this part here is going to overlap with the, the clip itself, so I'm going to delete that polygon. And even on the back, you can get rid of the back polygons because you're not going to see them. So that's going to clean up uh, that quite nicely. Uh, and then I can select this and I can drag that across, <coughs> excuse me, um, until it overlaps. It's overlapping quite nicely. I don't want to overlap it too much actually because then you run the risk of it kind of coming through the other side. So although it's not going to come through, it's in the middle. Um, I'm still going to pull that back a little bit just so it's not overlapping too much. So overall, I mean, that's pretty much done. The only thing that I'd maybe change is um, going ahead and adding in these kind of bolts and stuff and the screws. Uh, now with the screws, we don't actually need to worry about any advanced modeling. It's actually going to be textured uh, majority of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with uh, extended primitives, go to oil, oil tank, because that's probably going to give us the required effect. And I'm going to create an oil tank. Okay, so we kind of round off the top quite nicely there as if it was a screw, but it is fairly high poly. So um, there's no real options here to, apart from the sides, which we can reduce down to maybe about, I don't know, eight, because we're working, oh, let's go up to 10, just so it's a little bit rounder. We're going to go to edit, editable poly and we're just going to be going and reducing some of these triangles. So what we can do is we can just, we can maybe get away with it. If you wanted to reduce some tries, you can get rid of some vertices and edges. I'll just show you how quickly you just select one, you go to loop and hit control and backspace. So you have to hit control, have to hit backspace. Okay. If you want to just do a quick thing, you could just uh, loop that one, increase the scale and just pull it back a touch as well. So I think actually we've, that's actually not too bad. I'm just gonna, okay, so I'm gonna use that actually, that works a lot better. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, but if you don't wanna do the same thing and you wanna do a quick way, you can just add a symmetry modifier, make sure it's on the right axis, so the Y axis for this. It's actually the wrong way, so I'm gonna flip it. So if you flip it now, you can see it's not actually done a damn thing. So for some reason the Z axis is the correct one for this, possibly because I've rotated the object so that the local Z axis is actually sideways. If I just deselect flip, okay, that's obviously not correct. So I'm going to expand symmetry, click mirror, drag that across. 
until it's kind of roughly where I, you know, where I want it. That's going to be okay. Just collapse that all, hit yes, and then I can position it where I want it to go. So it's quite big still, so I'm just going to scale that smaller. Once again, it's roughly placed it where it needs to go. It's going to be an element of an overlap there as well, so we want that to kind of stick out a little bit. And then I'm just going to go to vertex because that's always the easiest option. Click and drag over that side and then drag it across. Now one thing we'll notice is that there's actually an edge cutting through the middle um, of this cylinder or this, or this oil, oil tank. That's because that's where I actually uh, sliced it. Um, that's where I actually applied the symmetry. So that's the seam line. So you hit loop on that edge. Control and backspace will get rid of your vertices as well. So you're going to save quite a few tries there. Um, it's quite nice. Okay, so that's pretty sure that's all about done. Um, and the very, very last touch is, let me just actually see, does that need to be bigger? I think that's okay, that'll work. I'm just gonna make a copy of that. Delete completely one whole end. Can't actually see it in that view, but if I just select one whole side, then hold Alt and deselect the longer side, press delete, and then I'm going to click and drag over the end on vertice and just move that across so it's very, very short like that. Okay. The reason why I do that is because I want this to be like the top of a screw. Um, and then the pivot's in the wrong place. I'm just going to go to hierarchy, effect pivot only, center to object, and that should be perfect. Now I can actually rotate this with angle snap turned on, 90 degrees. There we go. And that's actually ready to be placed now uh, where it needs to go. So right about there, let me increase the size, it's too small. So let's just increase that, lift it up. There we go. It's overlapping a little bit, which is okay. And then hold shift, drag that across to the other side, press okay. That's okay. And now we can actually click on the main body of the um, walkie talkie and drag that back and that should work pretty well like I said I want to make sure that this overlaps a little bit so you don't get any ugly spacing between uh, the different assets um, but yeah I mean that's pretty much done what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the same color that I had before onto the actual clip but on these screws I'm gonna apply a gray um, I know it should be maybe like a looking at the references more like a subtle kind of bronzy color. This is a kind of orange kind of coppery uh, rusted note to it. So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, so I think that looks pretty nice um, overall. So if I just press F4 to hide the edges, it's kind of getting there. Um, I like the way it looks. It looks pretty accurate. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the next video where we will be adding the buttons not only on the front end but also this side as well. Um, and we'll debate whether we're actually going to be creating these kind of bulging areas or just throwing the buttons on. We'll see. Um, so yeah, stay tuned guys for that video uh, for the next episode. If you have liked this video, please do hit the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you all next time.